everybody. Welcome to Busy, Smart, and Strong. And we are going to be busy today because we are going to be baking bread with the Valley's very own Chef Tess, Bakeress. <laughs> How are you? Great. How are you, Becky? I'm good. <laughs> now, in case you didn't know, her real name is Stephanie Peterson, and you live here in the Valley, but Chef Tess is your uh, webpage and your persona all persona over television. My nickname. That was the name my mom gave me as a kid. That was our little, what? Come cook with me. And so that kind of stuck, and it's been... Yeah. <laughs> well, it works. That's great. I don't know about you guys, but I occasionally like to dabble in baking bread. First question I have for you, though, how do I know if I've killed my yeast? That's a great question. The first thing you're going to know when you when you killed your yeast is your bread's not going to rise. And that is usually like the 99% of the time if your bread doesn't rise, it's because you killed your yeast. But at that point, Chef Tess, I've, I've wasted all my flour and everything. Is there a way to know before I get to the adding it? The main, the main thing is if your yeast has been sitting around for a while, what you're going to do is you're going to activate it in a little bit of water. So half a cup of water with your two teaspoons of yeast. If it bubbles and floats on the top and kind of looks like it's a big spongy, ooh, like it's having a good time, it's going to have a good time in your dough. Your water should be about the same temperature as your hand. If you put your, your finger in the water and it feels the same as the water, there you go. Okay, great. Go. Thank you for that tip. Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, so we're going to put two and a half cups of lukewarm water in a mixer. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add a quarter cup of oil. Pick your favorite. This is grapeseed oil. That's why it looks green. And then a two tablespoons of honey. So it's a very simple recipe, very few ingredients. And then the most pivotal ingredient is going to be the flour that you use for your bread. If you're wanting a whole grain bread that's going to give you really great um, nutrition and flavor, um, go with a hard wheat flour, um, one that's called a bread flour. You'll see bread wheat flour in the grocery store. This is six cups of fresh ground whole wheat flour. Now I use two different, there's two different kinds of grains that I basically go for when I'm doing my whole wheat. Modern wheat that we have right now, this, this one right here wheat. is a hard wheat. This one has about 42 chromosomes in its protein content compared to ancient wheat which is right next to it that's a kamut grain that one has about 28 chromosomes in its natural protein and the natural protein being the the gluten so gluten is a is what the, those proteins that connect to give you that wonderful structure in bread and you have to have that for good bread development so what we're going to do is we're just going to stick this flour in our mixer and then we're going to turn our mixer on to the second speed for about four minutes or so and then that's it. We're gonna, we're, then we're going to form it into a ball and put it in a bowl and let it raise. Okay, it is now magically one and a half hours later, and our bread dough has risen, and it looks absolutely awesome. beautiful. Let's take a look. Okay. That's how it should look, and oh, that's how it should smell. So you're going to be able to do what's called the ripe test to make sure the bread is ready. That is, I think, where they got the Pillsbury Doughboy thing where they stuck their finger in his yes. belly and it stayed. So what's going to happen, your hole is going to stay. There's going to be just some bunching around it. You're going to know, okay, it's ready to go. And that did not take a lot of, like, personal, emotional effort to stick your finger in. Just have it be, like, a real gentle touch and if it doesn't collapse you're good to go now at this point this is the cool part Becky a lot of people think they have to put four hours aside to make their bread in order to have what they want once it's done that first initial raise you can cover it and put it in your fridge and it's good for up to two weeks to be able to have bread on oh. dough on hand ready to go oh that's awesome I had no idea so save money save time do it yourself and okay. easy stuff okay so what you're gonna do you're gonna form a rectangle out of this dough and then you're gonna do like, I call it like the macarena for bread. Bon, bon. Oh, okay. Gotcha. okay, so do like a bon, bon, and a bon, bon. And then you're gonna totally flatten it out again. So what that does is it stacks the structure. It stacks that beautiful protein mesh and it makes it so it has a place for the, all the air to go in a nice uniform way. Okay. So then when it ends up raising, what happens is this bread ends up really, really pretty. It oh, ends up nice and rounded and gorgeous, yeah. you know? So then what you're going to do, kind of a cat, cat claws, what I call it, where I just kind of pull it toward me oh, in nice, it. tight, round roll, and then flip it over, and you're just going to pinch it real tight along that seam, and then pull the edges, sides together, and pinch them as well. So it just makes this really nice little balloon to hold all that air that the yeast is going to produce oh, when it's eating the sugars. I love it. It just it. gives and it a place to go. And it makes it nice and airy. And then I cover it with a little bit of plastic wrap, just lightly, don't make it too tight, just give it so a place to grow. And then I let it raise for about an hour more. So if you had pulled it out of your fridge, it's probably gonna be an hour and a half, a little bit longer because it was cold. Sure. But here in Arizona, our warm weather is perfect for this. It's just gonna raise nice and pretty and then it's ready to bake. Here again is Chef Tess's book. She's given us all these great tips on how to bake our bread and do it quickly and not take up so much time. And then you can paint it too. And she said a great project for summer. Thanks so much for Thank joining you us. so much for having me, Becky. It was so fun. It was fun. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Busy, Smart, and Strong.